S123. Testing our mic.
Welcome to the My Amazon Guy podcast. We've got uh, myself, Stephen Pope, at My Amazon Guy. I'm the host. Sierra is going to be helping us out behind the scenes. Thanks for joining us, Sierra. And we've got our guest today is Lucas. And Lucas, how do you say your last name? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I want to see if you would try it. It's Kwiatkowski. Kwiatkowski. I, I think I could do it if you told me like you did just now. So that's not too bad. Yeah. Um, so Lucas is a PPC expert. Today we're going to be answering all PPC questions, any advertising question you guys could possibly have, ACOS, TACOS, campaign structures, segmentations, how do I grow my sales? Those are all things that we'll probably talk about today. Um, so post your questions. We'll be diving in shortly. Before we do that, we're going to talk to Lucas a little bit about who he is and what he's up to. So Lucas, go ahead and let's dive on in. Yeah. So biggest thing is that I am, um, so again, I'm a full-time PPC manager and I'm still the guy that's hands on with all these campaigns. So I like to kind of separate myself that I'm looking at, I'm constantly trying to come up with advanced strategies with all of the tools that Amazon has to offer. So I'm not huge on automation yet. Um, I'm definitely using some automation with bulk uploads and, and, more hands-on manual stuff like that. But where I really try to dive in and separate stuff from my clients is again, using all these new types of campaigns, placement stats, up-down bidding, all of the advanced stuff that I don't think a lot of people dive into. So, um, and the biggest thing over the past year is I've started a YouTube channel where I'm doing live screen shares of these advanced strategies. And showing people that with PPC, it's it's never one thing that works for everyone. So I think that's that's a common misconception is there's kind of one size fits all. So what I'm constantly doing is showing people, hey, you know, like I set up this strategy on a few different accounts. It worked for most of them. Doesn't work for everyone. This is how we tweak it. So it's just kind of getting people more real live data instead of just, you know, people hiding their strategies and stuff like that. So that's where... I always love helping sellers, both large and small, just with all of this stuff and being very open about them. Well, very good. I, I respect a lot of what you just said. We're going to post some links to your channels and information. So uh, for those that are watching, you can follow and subscribe to Lucas at that link. Lucas also has a Facebook group with over 700 people that are in it. You can join the Facebook group right there. I don't know what Lucas's rules are on joining that, but you can give that yeah. a go. Um, cool. So, so today, I think I think you've established that you're hands-on Amazon advertising experts, um, and so we'll be fielding some questions for those who want to give that a test. We'll see if anybody can stump you today, Lucas. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it'll be lots of fun. All right. So we're gonna start with our first question. Here we go from Lungu. Hi, Stephen. When opening a second seller account with entity email bank account different, do I need to worry about IP address? Can I do it from the same computer? So I am gonna field this question, but we want most of our questions today to be around advertising. Um, to, on tomorrow, we're going to do a podcast on GS1 codes, but then the following Friday, we'll go back to our generic format. So, so Lunga, I do not think you need to worry about IP address. You can do it all from the same computer. If you read things online, that was not the case a year or two ago. It's since shifted, so we're good to go there. All right, so first PPC question, what's your strategy or a good resource for deciding how to adjust bids above or below the suggested range. I feel like I'm blindly moving them up or down with no strategy. So I think a better thing to do there is to look at your cost per click instead of the suggested range. So you'll know, you'll see there that the suggested range in Amazon, it changes, it changes daily based off of what everyone else is bidding, right? They, they show you the suggested range. Um, and actually what I've heard is that that the top of the suggested range is actually the 90th percentile. So if you if you want to just go by their numbers, what you can do is take that the, the, the ceiling of that range and then raise it by another 10%. In theory, that should get you the top of the page, but it probably won't work. So what I always tell people and what is a, a much easier thing to do is to look at your cost per click because you'll and people will ask me, hey, like I'm bidding $3 but my cost per click is only 150. Because remember, Amazon's PPC is auction based. So if you're bidding $3, you're only gonna pay as much as the person below you is bidding. So if they're, if they're bidding 140, you're gonna pay a little more than that. 
So that's why a lot of people, and it's actually been happening lately with these massive brands coming on, is they will come in and they'll bid $10 on keywords. And it, it completely messes everybody up. But also the biggest thing to remember is that one of Amazon's biggest uh, rules in their algorithm for PPC is conversion rate. So I have a lot of people come to me and they say, hey, I just, I just launched a product and I bid $10 and I'm not showing up on the top of the page. It's because you need to build that conversion rate up and get there and prove to Amazon that you can convert on this keyword. So I think that was that was a long answer, but going back to it is I think you're gonna get re, you're gonna get better data from your own PPC campaigns with cost per click than just blindly going in there and using what Amazon is using, because as we know, Amazon's data, um, their suggested stuff isn't as relevant as your actual search term data that you get yourself. All right, so Lucas, thanks for fielding that question. Uh, it can definitely be very uncomfortable when you're trying to make your bids. And so I think that's some good insight. Um, all right. So Lucas, I didn't know the topic ahead. Sorry. No, you're good. You're fine. No problem there. Um, trying to try and we're trying to take like a bunch of uh, uh, topics and do some in-depth topics and try and do some themes. And then um, we'll keep the Fridays at noon one more than likely will be the generic one. Although tomorrow we're doing UPCs and GS1. Dr. Kaz says, for the laziest person, <laughs> show me the money, man. Passive income, here we come. What is your recommended go-to PPC strategy? Auto and let AI take care of the bids? Yeah, see, and that's where you could say recommended PPC strategy. It's so different for everyone. If we want to boil it down to the very simplest thing, I mean, yeah, throw an auto campaign out there. Um, and the biggest tip I want to throw out, if, if you're just starting, with auto campaigns, make sure you have up down bidding on that kicked in a while ago on Amazon, but don't ignore that. So auto campaign with up down bidding. And then what you want to do is if you're if you're lazy and if you're not wanting to spend a lot here, set a tight budget. So say you set a ten dollar budget just in the in the plan that you're going to hit that budget every single day and then give it some time biggest thing I always preach is people are not patient enough with PPC. So I guess laziness and patience can kind of go hand in hand. Um, so again, set that auto campaign. If you don't want to do any keyword research, next step, start to pull manual keywords from that auto campaign and go from there. And then, you know, and then we can really get into it. But yeah, that's the easiest thing to do. And, and, and uh, Dr. Kaz, you, you, you're obviously a, a fan that comes to many of these sessions. I'm going to criticize your comment just a tiny bit. So being lazy and selling on Amazon do not go hand in hand. I know you asked this question and you're not actually lazy. So, But, but just for anybody watching this, I want to make it very clear. Amazon is not passive income. It takes a lot of work. And you do need to spend a lot of time in your advertising campaigns. All right. So, uh, all right. How much... We need to spend in PPC to know if the product is worth to advertise or not. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's tricky. So it's it's kind of a, uh, there's a grace period here, right? So when people start advertising, you're likely not going to have any reviews. So what you need to remember is that obviously you want to start spending the second you launch a product, but you can't just forego a keyword if you get data on it when you don't have reviews. So this is extremely tricky. And instead of thinking of spend, you need to think of clicks, right? Because if you look at spend, that's going to be different for everyone. So a super, super high number on this is probably 20 clicks and no sales. If you're getting 20 clicks and no sales on a keyword, it's it's time to rethink. So, but one more advanced thing on this and that people forget often is you need to see where you're getting those clicks. So what I try to tell people is when you're first launching, hone in on a few keywords, but try to focus on top of search placement stats. So going back to this, you know, when you're shopping on Amazon and you see five products at the top, you're probably going to pick one of the ones that, that's at the top. So if you want to be super aggressive and really see if something is worth advertising or not, make sure you're only getting impressions and clicks at the top of the page. All right, so top of page, I de definitely think is very valuable. Next question comes in. Lance says, bidding 10% more than the 90th percentile doesn't mean you cover the range. The upper 10% can, in theory, bid way.
way more. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So, and, and that's why I wanted to throw that in there because that's what I've heard is, is that range. Um, and that's why we're, I think a lot of people know that at this point. So that's why, and that's what people do. You just go way, way, way above that. And people often think, well, if I, if I bid $10 a click, aren't I going to, or $10 on a keyword, aren't I going to have to pay $10? Not necessarily. Set a super high bid and then wait for your cost per click to come in and go from there. Mohit says, what type of PPC increases your organic keyword ranking and which does not? I'm going to tackle this a tiny bit and toss it to you, Lucas. Yep. So the A9 updates for SEO uh, changed the impact of PPC to SEO. And so uh, it went from a very large percentage, 20, 30, 40%, I don't know for sure, but A9 lowered it down to 6%. <laughs> and 40% of the organic keyword rankings are now based on organic sales as well as uh, sales that don't come from PPC. So, so you're like your 90 day run rates. So, so PPC's SEO impact has greatly diminished, but Lucas, what do you have to add to that? So what I would say there, and the, the best strategy that I've seen that if you wanna, if you have keywords you wanna rank for, it's exact match at top of search. So what you wanna do is if you wanna, you wanna rank for these keywords, you segment them out you put them into their own campaigns. You can even do one keyword per campaign. That works. If you want to spend $100 on one keyword, put it in its own campaign with exact match, with top of search placement. That's going to be the quickest way to increase your ranking there. And I, I totally agree with that. Um, and I think I would advise having at least three keywords per product, have an isolated keyword strategy with one keyword per campaign uh, for SEO. Because like if you sell tweezers, you need to rank for tweezers. You got to have an SEO and, and you're going to pay through the nose for that ACOS and happily so because all the cursory keywords, you know, with uh, thousands and thousands of cursory keywords, it has a lot of value. All right. Yep. So next question again from Dr. Kaz here. I notice on manual campaigns, the less targets I place, the more effective. Have you seen a relationship? I have a feeling you're going to say yes. The less targets I place, so the less keyword, okay, so the less keywords you put in a manual, the more effective you've seen it. Yes, for sure. It's exactly what I just said is there, there's kind of a, a progression. And once you're a huge brand is you want to keep segmenting out these keywords because it's, it's, it's all, um, it's budget based, right? So you have one big keyword in a campaign that's eating all the budget. A lot of the other ones aren't going to get clicks. And then also, I mean, sure, Stephen, I'm sure you have a kind of a, a cutoff for keywords that you see drop off in impressions. It's usually like 20 to 30 keywords in an ad group. After that, sure, you're still going to get some clicks and impressions, but it's I feel like that's a really good number to shoot for in an ad group. I, I feel like the change happened in June of 2019, like that exact month. Yeah. Uh, and, and I feel like I used to do shotgun approaches and had lots of success and then the algorithm switched and then it was more about relevancy and that's kind of where it's been since. And so if certain keywords in a campaign are more relevant than others, then Amazon will put more impressions there. But if you have a dedicated campaign, Amazon knows you're not going to spend anything unless they give you impressions on that particular keyword. You get the idea. So keyword isolation strategies definitely in right now, Dr. Koss. Triffin says, can you talk about how to start building structure manual campaigns by pulling from automatics? How do you structure the ad groups separate from high volume keywords with low volume, close, loose, et cetera? Lots to unpack with this one, Lucas. Yeah. So I'll cover the manuals first. So structure for manual campaigns is, so you said start building. So let's assume you're, you're launching and you're, a, you're a, a new seller or something like that. So... I don't know why, but a lot of times people don't use all the tools they have. They only use a couple of the match types. So simplest way I want to put this right now is I like to have for manuals, I would start with two with two manuals. One manual is going to have one ad group for broad, one ad group for phrase, and then you're going to have your exact match keywords in a separate campaign. So you think of the broad and phrase as your research campaign. You're going to get some long tail keywords in there and all of that stuff, and then you're going to keep moving those into the exact match. And then like we're talking about, you'll keep building out more campaigns for single keywords and growing from there. As far as high volume, low volume, that's kind of what we're talking about too, is if you start with a, a research campaign with 50 keywords in there, and then you have five keywords getting all the traffic, 
what you can do is you can you can extract the other 40 or so that aren't getting any, put them into their own campaign. So then they start getting their clicks. So just see what the data is doing. And you, there's always changes you can make um, really quick. And I want to touch on his last thing there, close, loose. That's referring to autos. So that's, I mean, you can segment those as much as you want. Um, but I say if you're just starting and you're doing up-down bidding and autos, put a higher bid on your close match. It'll give you a better return. But I still like to have loose and substitutes running, um, even though they could they could hit you with some bad negatives there. So keep all four match types running for auto and then just see how they do for you. Lucas, I, I tried Googling Amazon PPC joke, and I was trying to find like, you know, a joke to kind of intermingle here. And instead, what I found was Amazon PPC is a joke. It's not worth doing. So here's my question to you. Is PPC worth doing? And if you have any Amazon PPC jokes, I do want to hear them. It's so it's definitely worth doing, but I think a lot of people, it's not worth overdoing to a point. So I think, and I'm trying to think of a, a joke. I've been talking about tacos lately. So maybe there's even in my, in my YouTube thumbnails, we've been putting tacos in the pictures, maybe not a joke, but it's fun to just talk about tacos all day. Um, Some people say it should be ACOTs. It should be yeah. what? It should be ACOTs instead of tacos. I like that. That's a good one. Maybe we can, we can roll with that. So, and I, I just think that a lot of people, they think of PPC in a bubble, right? They're like, my PPC isn't performing. Why? So you got to look at your Amazon account as a whole. You got to see what your organic sales and doing. And if you're, if you can continuing to grow, but PPC is continuing to make up a larger chunk of your sales and like, you're not launching any new products, something is wrong. So remember organic is always your priority. And at a point, if you're still growing, you can dial down tacos and you can you can tweak budgets and tweak spend. So that's what I think a lot of people forget to think about. Real quick before to the next question. So I think that tacos should be at least 10% for people. Um, what number would you suggest? Yeah. So wait, you say at, at the least it should be a 10%? Yeah, because if somebody's under 10%, I feel like they're leaving sales on the table. They're not advertising enough. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so I've seen with some of my massive brands that have that have bestseller tags and that have been there for a while, they like to be around 8%, but that number is creeping up because of new people coming in. So I do that used to be my baseline before was 8%. But yeah, I think 10 is like very optimized straight profitability, but I think with all the new types of ads that are coming on, you know, there's nothing 15 to 20% is totally normal right now for tacos. All right, so Genius Lab Gear, I have two similar products, Red Pen and Blue Pen, in separate listings. Cannot be combined as variants, which is weird. Normally, color variation is the safest one. Yeah, especially and have them pen. delivering to the same keywords in a single campaign. Are my two products bidding against each other? So, I, so this, is, this is actually a very common question. Can you bid against yourself in your own campaigns? Yeah, so... I and you know what? I am not a hundred percent sure on this. I feel like, what, do, do you do you know this answer for for a fact? I, I I've, been told by, I've been told by multiple Amazon sources that you cannot bid against yourself. Yeah, but with all things, you never know for sure. <laughs> yeah, so I I would say, but there is it's the word like overlap. I would use overlap maybe. So because people just get kind of scared about this if you're grouping them into their own campaign. So. It, Cause you know, you can go in there and you can, you can see the metrics for each of these products. So, I mean, if you are scared about overlap or anything and want to give each of these their own budget, break them out into their own campaigns and, and have each of them spending their own budget daily. One, one of the things I would say to uh, genius lab, you could, you could have one campaign with both pens in it with, but each pen has its own ad group. And I would do yeah. three ad groups. I would do one ad group for red, one for blue and one for both, right? In the red, put all of your red keywords and in the blue, put all your blue keywords. And then your third one, you have all the pen generic keywords. Yep. Um, now you could do it that way. I've also done it like three campaigns. I, I don't think I have a strong preference between those two setups, but if you are worried about you know, bidding against yourself, which I, again, I don't, I don't think either Lucas or I feel, feel like that is a threat, but we can't, it's a non-zero threat at least. Yeah. Um, then, then put them into one campaign with three ad groups. All right, so AJ says, what do you think about spending over 200% ACoS for an existing product in order to rank for that competitive keyword? Or what would you recommend the limit for ACoS? So my first question here would be, is it a subscribe and save product? 
So that's a whole nother conversation. Is it lifetime value question? Exactly. Right. So you have, I've got supplement clients, supplement clients, hundred percent ACOS, pretty normal, right? Cause you're going to get that person to rebuy your product every two months. So that would be my first question. The second question is if it's a one-time buy product, I mean, everyone's different. If you have a lot of money and you want to get to page one for this keyword and you know that you can compete with the guys at the top and you know how many units they're moving a day, then by all means, go up there and try to get that ranking. Um, but it might be a, a long grind to get up there if, you're, if your cost per click and your ACOS is this high. That's an incredibly high ACOS, AJ. And, and so it just depends on how deep your pockets are, I guess, and what your goals are. But I, but I, I agree with Lucas. All right, Luke says, do you start with low bids and work your way up or just pay whatever it takes to be at the top of page one? This is a loaded question. Yeah, and, and that's where I always say time and time again, start off and react to the data, right? So starting with, um, there, there is something in Amazon where there's a, there's a grace period. When you kind of launch a new product, in the first couple of weeks, Amazon, you, you get more clicks and impressions than normal. Like Amazon wants you to spend on that new product. So what, what the better thing to do is set a hard budget that you want to spend. If you, if you don't have much ad spend, set $500 and say you want to spend $500 in two weeks and then hit that number and then go from there. So I would say, um, Luke, I would not start too low because in the first two weeks is the honeymoon period, maybe as long as four weeks. Nobody knows for 100% certainty. Um, I would say it's 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 important that you get as many sales on the door as you possibly can. So one of the phrases I like to throw around is you need sales to get sales. If you start low bids and work your way up, you are diminishing your honeymoon period and you're going to have less overall sales. Even if you save a, a, a buck, you're going to be, as the British would say, penny wise but pound foolish. So I would not start low. I would, I would go middle tier if you're uncertain and then go aggressive on select keywords personally. Uh, Datvu says, is it, uh, is it best to do manual exact campaign if you have a list of keywords already for launch or you still do broad and phrase match based on keywords lists you have? What about auto? Well, so the first, so uh, about auto, I mean, let's just talk about the, the manual keywords. So if you have, so you have a, a list of manual keywords, let's say 20 of them. And what I said before is you don't, you don't want to pigeonhole yourself into just one type. So plenty of times I've seen people, their, their broad match might perform better than exact match because you get more data in there. So again, what you want to do is you want to segment those. You want to have an exact match campaign with those keywords, but then you want to have another campaign with your broad and phrase match so that you're pulling in those long tails and, it's, and you're getting more impressions. So that's kind of the goal there. And then what about the auto? What about auto? So a lot, I've also, it's amazing. I've come into accounts that are very established sellers and they don't have any autos running. Remember that autos show up, like it's specifically on product pages, they show up in a spot that no other campaign can get to. And also as Amazon algorithm gets smarter, autos are getting better. So don't forget about your autos. You want an auto for every single ASIN. And like I keep saying, do that up down bidding and you'll see amazing results on those autos. Can we go back to that comment? You said that there's a specific segmented place for real estate where ads show that only autos show. That's actually new information to me. I did not know this. Can you tell me a little more about that? Yeah, so it's the, I call them the, the carousels on the product pages. So it's when you're like, you know, you go in a search term report and you, you get a, an ad or a, a sale from an ASIN from your auto campaign. So it's when you're on a, a product detail page is there a speech here for this. This is, I think this okay. is important. Keep, keep talking though. So it's, it's when you're, so you're on a product detail page and you scroll down and there's, I call them the, the carousels of products, right? And it says sponsored and there's two sections there because one of them is manual product targeting where you can bid on your competitor ASINs. And then another one is from auto campaigns. So this is really interesting. I never knew this. Uh, so you're saying that, that the one, let's say this top row right here is manually targeted and the bottom row is auto targeted. Is yeah, and they, 
Did I get that, that right? Squish a lot. Again, I don't what there might be someone out there that's gonna that's gonna say I'm wrong. So I'll say I'm 95% sure of this. But that's why there's two separate carousels here. Um, and they sometimes they'll change on the page where they're showing up. But this is what's happening when you're getting when you're getting sales from ASINs in your search term report on autos. Well, uh, whether whether you're right or not, people need to be running their auto campaigns. I'm 100% certain of that. Um, the other thing I'd say is there's a lot of people that disagree with me on this one. So I'm curious what you're going to say. Should you add negations to your auto campaigns? Yes, but don't go crazy. So people have automated rules, and especially if we're, you know, software is going to have automated rules where they're constantly adding negatives. I'm sure you've seen this and I, I feel like I do. I'm, I'm leaning towards agreeing with you. Um, once you add too many negatives, there's kind of a point of no return in an auto campaign. So I would say have a very, very high ceiling for negatives, but be very careful because they can they can really mess up a campaign. So I, so I agree with your sentiment. Um, I am in favor of negatives, and I think that there's certain words that will never convert on an account. Um, yeah. So for example, my wine glass example, um, I would never be able to sell my wine glass to somebody typing in plastic wine glass or metal unbreakable wine glass. So I'm going to negate those because that's just a waste of money. At the same time, the auto campaigns are going to find new keywords that aren't currently on my radar. Maybe there's a trend. Maybe maybe I didn't ever target my you know upcoming Mother's Day campaign, I, and I didn't I didn't put in yes for mom. But all of a sudden, the auto campaign knows that my item's a good gift for mom. Well, it starts bidding on it, and since I have an auto campaign, I get some coverage. So I think there's some great opportunities behind behind auto campaigns. So, but uh, Lucas, I appreciate the uh, the ninety five percent sure tip on on the on the, the rows there. I found that very fascinating. New information. Yeah. Uh, Lungo says, if I have three to five good keywords from auto campaigns, am I doing it right if creating a manual exact campaign for each single keyword? So he's talking about keyword isolation. Yeah. So that's that's up to you. If you, yeah, I, I think right off the bat, it's, it's easier to do that, to segment each of them. Um, because then, again, going back to budget, you can get each of them a $20 a day budget or $30 a day budget and then tweak each of them as they go. Um, because also every keyword is so different. So in each of those campaigns, if you segment them on their own, each have their own budget and they each have different placement stats to get you to the top of the page. It gives you so much more control. It might be a little more work, but it's a lot more control and it'll help you in the long run. So it's definitely more work, no doubt about that. But also yeah. you get what you pay for. You get what the time, you, you, you reap what you sow. Same yeah. comment, said two different ways. Um, I'm going back to a, co a comment you made a little bit ago where you talked about uh, you know, you didn't say it just like this, but it was basically humans versus robots. So let's talk a little bit about that for a second. So, yeah. so I am a proponent of robots for a cost reduction, but I think humans run circles around robots for growth. What are your thoughts? Yes, com I completely agree with that. So what I think, and I've been, I don't want to say fighting with softwares, but you know, taking a lot of clients back who were 100% software with no human touch to it. And that's what you need is you exactly, you have a set of rules that you can input to lower your ACOS on your on your campaigns that have been running for a while. But these new campaigns that we're talking about, the research campaigns, the new sponsored display, headline ad, video ads, all of these things you wanna be super aggressive on, you need a human touch because some campaigns, you wanna ignore those rules. And if you just strictly stick to that set of rules, it's a little hard to grow because you can't push past that that kind of limit. That they have. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, yeah, it's like those auto caps, if you will. So that's a good point. Yeah. All right, Doctor Cos says, "Are you a fan of the Amazon recommended campaign budget? Is it a fair barometer to follow?" I haven't used the word barometer since I took weather in college. My father is a weatherman in Utah. Or, or he's, he's a retired weatherman. He's now the sales manager at my Amazon guy. So if you ever, any any weather fans listening in, you just want to talk weather, the phone number listed on my website will ring my dad's cell phone and feel free to talk to him. He'll, he'll, he'll talk weather all day long. And I give him permission to do so. But anyway, back to barometer PPC. Uh, what, what are your thoughts here? Is it a fair barometer? So just, just take a few minutes to think about it. So Amazon wants to spend your money, right? They want you to spend. So the best example I have of this um, our holiday campaigns. I have holiday campaigns up for Easter right now. I have people who sell chocolate. 
So we have a very, we're spending like $1,000 a day on a headline ad and we're slowly upping that. Amazon suggested we spend $5,000 a day. We know it's, it's, it's too soon. So I guess kind of the answer here is, is know, know your product and know when it's time to spend versus when it's not. Because usually their upper limit here, it might be way too high. So just take it with a grain of salt. And the, the, the reason they're giving you that suggested budget, because that's, that's the number that they know it's going to spend all day, right? So it's going to be running 24 hours. But um, when, when in doubt, don't tap out your budgets because you're missing out on the evenings when a lot of people shop, right? And so if your budget taps out by 2 p.m. local time, yeah. boy, you're missing out on tremendous sales. So it's all about leaving sales on the table, in my opinion. TN says, my friend and I are selling the same product from the same source. Ooh, this one's interesting. Huh. Is it a good strategy that we bid on each other's listings huh. so the traffic will lose less to... Listing three, four, and five. Huh. I have I have some thoughts on this. I'll, I'll go first if you want to think about it. So yeah, yeah, I, go ahead. I would say yes, short term, no long term. Yes, short term until you have the frequently looked at together sections of the uh, bidding done, right? Because then then you guys associate your products together. I think there's some benefit to that. I think that that you trying to take sales from each other though long term is probably a losing proposition and and I think that that's wasted money um, and so as we all know when we go to an Amazon listing page there's so many different rabbit holes to click on and Amazon has run out of real estate so you know at the end of the day I would I would say that there's a hundred ads on the listing if you take up one of them the, the amount of difference you're gonna make is pretty nominal and so you're not really helping each other by pushing out the other competitors so instead, uh, spend more on your competitor listings, in my opinion. All right, Lucas, you've had a chance to think about this one. Do you have anything to add yeah. there? I, I, I agree. The only thing I would, I would touch on is, you know, think of it as, de as defending your listings. You know, I like to think of ads as offensive and defensive. Very so, much. You know, people do like, yeah, you should bid on your own listings to defend them from competitors. Um, but, yeah, I feel that's, that's kind of a, a sticky situation if you're bidding against your friend. Maybe if you guys are, I don't know, work in, in business together or something. Um, but I would say focus more on your competitors because it sounds like your competitors are probably doing more volume than you anyway. So focus on what's going to get you more sales. Well said. All right. Luke says, thank you guys. I get mostly organic sales. I have 11% lifetime ACOS since 2017. Only spent 55000 and spend since then. Somehow got great sales with 0 0.09 bids. Well, uh, Luke, I used to do 0.02 bids. I'm going to one-up you here, Luke, on rice cookers in the kitchen equipment industry, um, probably 2014 to 15, somewhere in that time range. Um, so it was definitely possible back then. Uh, if you're getting nine-cent bids today, that's unheard of, like yeah. unprecedented. Yeah. Um, we're seeing supplement bids above $5. We're seeing uh, – Health and beauty above four dollars. There's just a ton of competition right now. In fact, I think Amazon's like ran out of room for its real estate, and that's why I personally predict that we're going to see video ads go off the Amazon platform on platforms like Twitch and push back to the Amazon platform. That's how out of real estate I think Amazon is. Uh, Lucas, would you like to weigh in or make any other comments? I would say you know, not it's not much of a, a question. It's more of a, a a brag, but I don't I don't blame I you for posting that because i would say the lowest i can i know right now is like we can see bids of 20 cents in kind of home and um like out outdoor products and maybe automotive they can see some 20 cent bids right now but yeah it's you know you, you knew when times used to be better when there was way fewer sellers and you could get those cheaper clicks it was it was way more fun unprecedented times yeah. yes all right uh chesky asks human agency versus ia program i feel like we hit this home any additional thoughts you want to add on that one yeah. though I would say that I would say yes. You, if you want to, if you want to do one of them, use use both of them. So again, if you're going to go with one of the big automated softwares, just don't set it and forget it. You've got to be involved in it somehow, and you've got to be looking at the data and making sure that's making sense for you. Totally agree, Genius Lab. You're any danger in boosting your campaign budget too quickly in terms of Amazon's algorithm? I've been warned on Facebook to only do 10% increments, or else the optimization may be affected. I have not heard of that with budgets. Maybe he's confusing it with uh, price raising of the actual item, not the budget. 
Yeah, I would definitely I have, say that. I've right. heard this on pricing strategies. Oh, if you raise yeah, for sure. more than 10%, you can lose your own buy box. I haven't heard anything like this. All right, so we'll go yeah, on the next one there. there. I think you can you can jack it up as much as you want on budget. Uh, pros and cons. All right, so so uh, I guess this is a very interesting topic today, so I'll add a couple more flavor comments. So, so the pro of an agency is that you've got more growth, and the negative of the agency is there's a little bit more wasted ad spend because they're testing more things. Whereas the robots will kill it so quickly, it diminishes your growth, but often are great at reining in costs. Um, <clears throat> all right, we've hit that one home. Triff says, Lucas, what's up, man? Curious if you have any new campaigns you've been experimenting with that you're interested in. 900% bid adjustments, maybe? Thank you, guys. You are awesome. You're very welcome, Triff. Yeah, so that that's probably one of the, the favorite and best tips that I've come up with. There is a... Uh, a video I made probably middle of last year where you hit it's it's an and it's on auto campaigns. You set close match bids to like three cents and then do 900% top of search on your auto campaign and you get amazing data on really, really low volume keywords. So that's a really good one. And I, I think the best way to think of this, you know, I, I can't always share all of my strategies and tips like this that I come up with, but just, just poke around Amazon and, and see these limits. Like, right, obviously they have 900% there because it it works. So if you see a ceiling like this, test it out. And that's what I'm constantly saying is always be testing. Throw a low budget at something like this. Try it. See if it works. All right. I'm going to take you up on this test here. I've not cool. done this exact strategy before. So okay. I'm going to build this in live right here. So I'm going to create an auto three cent, 900% bid up on one yep. of my top sellers. I'm gonna throw 50 bucks a day on this auto targeting. So this uh, one, you want, this one I've tested, you wanna do down only? Okay, down only. I normally start mine out with uh, fixed bids um, and then migrate them over. What do you normally do? Um, probably, yeah, I don't I don't see a, a massive difference there. I feel like either, either one would be fine. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna do, oh, nice. One of my products is ineligible, <laughs> cool. Well, this is my top seller. Nice to find out on a live show together today. So we'll pivot over to quarantine. <laughs> Maybe I got flagged for pesticides again. Oh my Watch. gosh, I got a note this morning. Maybe that's what that was about. Yeah, everyone, uh, everyone's getting flagged for pesticides right now. It doesn't matter yeah. what sort of product you have. All right, so we're gonna change the default bid down to 0.03. Well, so now what I like to do here is you wanna set these by by targeting group. Okay. All right, so guide, so, guide me guide me here. So click yep, that. So that bid right there. So um, for 900%, what it does, it, it multiplies things by 10. So if you do a so three like, cent like bid. Turn, turn these off then? Um, so so keep those on. So what I would do here is I keep, so let's let's do a five cent bid on close match. Okay. That's going to max you out to 50 cents. And then just do a two cent bid on all of the other ones, which will max all you right. out to 20. So what's going to happen the goal, and what should happen is most of your clicks right now should be top of search, close match. That's it. Sometimes you'll get some other low hanging fruit clicks in here and on loose and substitutes. But what I'll do here is if you have a massive catalog, um, I'll do a bulk upload of one ASIN per campaign with these exact numbers. And you just get crazy results on keywords that you've never seen before. Cool. Just hit launch campaign. We'll see what happens, guys. We'll report Boom. back. By the way, the video you mentioned earlier, uh, go ahead and and come back on the, you know, after the show, post a link to it. We'll absolutely yeah. post it in the comment section. So if anybody's curious to see a strategy on that, we just did a live demo of that. But I'm sure your video will add a lot of flavor and you go more in depth. Yeah. Uh, very cool. All right. So let's go to regarding negation. If the negative is so obvious, nobody will click it regarding plastic cup and wine glass, AI will figure it out. Will it not? The answer is no, it will not. It no. will not. It will spend your money if you let it, in my opinion. Yep. So I've seen Absolutely. hundreds and hundreds of dollars wasted on obvious negations. Now the auto campaign is going to try to go where the sales are coming from, but often the case, still a lot of wasted ad spend. Yeah, a good thing there. If you wanna get way ahead of it, is if you can think of a very, very obvious list of negative phrases, it's this can be risky, but like you said, if you have a wine glass and you know it's not gonna convert for plastic, when you start campaigns, you can input plastic as a negative phrase. If you're selling a dog product that you know will never sell to cats, input cat as a negative phrase and you can try to get ahead of that stuff. 
Very good. Uh, Zishan says, my campaign is running for three weeks. Can you please elaborate more on why we would bid in auto up and down since I thought bid down would be safer? Same strategy with all the manual and exact campaigns too. It's a little hard to translate this one. Do you understand what he's saying? Yeah, yeah. So so why, why go auto up down? Um, so my answer there is because Amazon's getting smarter. So it was probably about a year ago now when you create a new auto campaign, they would default to auto up down. Um, and they put that in there because they're getting smarter. If your SEO is, well, that's the biggest thing though, is your SEO needs to be done correctly and they'll know where to kind of put you in front of these placements. Um, so try it out. If your listing is, is done correctly, that auto up down should give you some, some better data on keywords you haven't seen before. All right, let's go to the next one. Tian says, thank you for the info. Changed my auto campaigns from only down to up and down. I got two sales in the last 10 minutes. Hello, this is great. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> well, that's the kind of feedback that. we love to see on a live show, uh, obviously. <laughs> so thank you for that. That's great. Cool. Uh, what are the best campaign bidding strategies? Down only, up and down versus fixed bids. So it seems like a topic people are very interested yeah. in right now. Yeah, yeah. So you, so you mentioned that you've been. That's what I wanted to kind of ask you first. You said you start with fixed bids and then move over to, to down only. No, I move over to up and down. Um, so okay. I start with the fixed bid because I feel like Amazon uh, doesn't give you as many impressions when you first start out. They gotcha. they they diminish it. And so in the honeymoon period, I'm willing to spend a heck of a lot more when I first launch a product. But if it's a mature listing, up and down, I usually find to be quite successful. Yeah. So I, I would say, and I think we've, we've, we've been saying it a lot, up and down works for a lot of campaigns right now. I've also seen up and down on even product targeting campaigns. So if you're targeting your other, um, your other competitors, you know that area of Amazon is getting more and more competitive. If there's a massive listing, like a well-known brand, everyone is gonna be bidding on their listing. So even up and down, going after them is working extremely well. Johan says, for certain campaigns where the main focus is not conversions, for example, lead gen, exposure with headline ads, what are the main data points you look at to judge if the campaign is worth running? All right. Hey, uh, Johannes, I remember a, a couple years ago, I, I got to hop into your account and work with you. So it's good to hear from you. So, okay. So, right. The more research campaigns that we're talking about, the main data points we want to look at here. And I, I would say again, remember, bring this back to overall sales. So if you're if you're if you're creating a campaign and it's not helping your bottom line, then it's it's doing something wrong. So you do want to test this out. Um, the main data points you look at if the campaign is worth running. It's okay. So it's it's click through rate and conversion rate. I think that's the easiest way to put this. If you're not getting a high click through rate and a high conversion rate. It's probably not worth doing unless you're being very aggressive. And I would say, you know, we look at brand headline ads as more of top of funnel, right? And so a lot of people watching this aren't ready for top of funnel strategies. You know, if you're if you're spending under five thousand a month, headline ads are not for you. Um, I mean, like like programs like DSP are like fifteen grand just for DSP, for example. Um, I, I I right now I kind of feel like the percentages should be like seventy percent sponsored products, ten percent sponsored headlines and 20% for display slash video. I kind of bucket it that way. Um, but I don't know, how, how would you allocate it, Lucas? Yeah, I, I think that's pretty fair. And then right, as you grow, you can you can kind of shift that. Because um, right, as you as you it's lock more down more top, top, yeah, as you as you lock down more top ad spots and build out your brand is you can then lock down those headline spots that are way more expensive. And you got to be ready to, to have one of those top spots there for the headline. Iman says ASINs have gone from one to six. I'm spending about 550 per day on PPC, 20% ACOS during holidays, 30% in Q1. Mostly automatic campaigns so far because manual campaigns have a higher ACOS. Time to hire? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's yep. when you bring in a PPC expert like uh, like Lucas here or, or my Amazon guy or whoever else you've got connections with. You need... If you're having uh, that much Amazon spend and you're not doing manual, I pretty much guarantee you are missing out on massive amounts of sales. I mean, that is a very high amount of advertising to not be spending like 80% of that on manual campaigns. 
yeah, those are those are the best the best accounts to come into. I actually just just came into one about a, a month ago that was doing I think two million a year in total sales with barely any spend. And I don't know how he's been on the platform for like five years, just kind of plugging along. We came in here and just like a, a couple simple manuals on the keywords that he's already doing well for it just blew his account up. So yeah, definitely want to should should grow a little bit there with your PPC. You, you are holding back your growth, sir, right now. Yeah. You absolutely are holding back. And you know, you you can hire a PPC guy for a couple grand a month and and see amazing results. So yeah. I would definitely recommend it. All right, Dr. Cos says, "Hey Lucas, cheers my man. Love your work and yours too, Mr. Mag. I appreciate it. Thanks, Dr. Cos." Awesome. Uh, body comp, what's the difference between up and down bidding? Sorry if you've already said it, but I just joined the room. We'll go ahead and do it again. Right. Just, I guess we didn't, we didn't really uh, define it. So if, I mean, you can go on Amazon and see, they'll tell you what this means, but if you do up and down bidding, they will raise your bids by up to a hundred percent. If you are more likely to convert for a sale, easiest way to think about it. If you put a 50 cent bid with up down bidding, then that will raise it to up to a dollar because it'll double it if you're likely to convert for a sale. Next question comes from Angelo. How do we optimize auto up and down? Hey, Angelo, it's good to hear from you too. So how do we, how do we optimize auto up and down? It's, I mean, it's how do you optimize any campaign, right? It's you're, you're looking in there for negatives. Um, but what you want to do is, is stick with it. So if, if it starts to underperform, then don't change it to down only. What I would do is just put much lower bids. You can get away with very, very, very low bids there. So if it starts to underperform, um, focus on the close match and then lower the bids for maybe loose and substitutes. Jennifer asks, do you recommend bidding on our own brand name? Yes. 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 Espe well, especially if you're a well-known brand is as you in the beginning, it's probably not worth it. I'm sure your brand name doesn't have any search volume, but you need to defend not only your brand name, but your listings. So bid on your brand name and bid on your own listings. This question is not a new one, by the way. This this question has been around since the internet existed. And, and so I've been in many boardrooms having this conversation. Steven, Steven, why are, we, why are we spending a couple thousand dollars on our brand name every month? And the answer is because if you don't, your competitors are going to, and then they're going to acquire your customers. So the same thing applies here on Amazon. You need to spend money on your own brand. And, and so if you don't, you will lose, you will lose touch points to your competitors. Very, very important. Uh, Body Comp says, thank you. You're very welcome. We actually don't have any additional uh, questions in queue right now. So we're going to take a couple more and then wrap it up. Um, so if you have a question, you haven't asked it yet, you've been itching, you've been watching, you've been sitting on the sidelines, this is your time to get an immediate answer to your question. Post it in the chat right now. Lucas, while we wait for a couple more questions here, how can somebody get in touch with you if they want to learn more about what you do? Yeah, so I have I give out my, my personal email is amzluke at gmail. So I will, again, I've got kind of two areas of people I help. Um, I'm trying to launch two videos a week right now on YouTube for your smaller sellers. So for people that can't quite hire yet and want to know how to dive deeper. And then for management, I'm taking on much bigger clients and my sales pitch there is just helping people get past plateaus. So again, I'm all manual doing these advanced strategies for much bigger accounts that are maybe kind of stagnant or looking for growth. I'm going to come in there and manage the PPC full time for them. Great. We put your email right straight into the comments section for those that are interested. Davu says, what's your minimal spend per day for each campaign of exact broad or phrase match for each keyword in order to have some success, you would say? For minimal, I would, I, I would almost say, what's your maximum spend per day? <laughs> you turn that one around. Right? I would say you want to you know what maximum is, but easiest way to think about this would be, would be tacos. So if you want to do maybe... 10 orders a day, then decide what do you want, what you want your, your tacos to be set that maximum and then hit it. So pick the forecasted growth and work yourself backwards. And, and, and I get this question all the time, like, what should my budget be? And I say 10% of your desired growth spend, you want to be a million dollars, come spend a hundred grand. Yeah. So Kali Park says, how much would you be spending on PPC per day? If your ROAS was 8.5, uh, unlimited infinite number, I would spend yeah. $5 million a day if I had an 8.5 ROAS. Yeah. What? 
Yeah, it's an incredible ROAS call. You got you got to up that spend, no doubt about it. Like hundred percent chance you need to up the spend. Yep, don't be afraid. You won't get eight point five on your next hundred thousand in spend, most likely, but it'll still probably be like six and a half or seven. Right, it'll still be worthwhile. Body comp quickest way to re get reviews for someone that just launched last week. So this is not quite a PPC question, but I'm sure your I'm sure your customers ask this. Yeah, all the time. And it's, I'm gonna, you know, I only handle PPC, but obviously I talk about a lot of other stuff. So that's where, again, it's, it's a fine line because like you said, is you need sales to get sales. So you need to push in that grace period. If you're not planning on, I mean, if you're not planning on doing anything else, no social media, no early review program, then PPC is, I guess, your only They, tool. they just killed the early reviewer program like a couple days ago. Wait, they did? Yeah. I did so, not even hear about that. I bet you that was news to 10 people in the chat too. So uh, they just killed it. It's going away. And they're probably going to revamp Vine. I don't have any insider information on that, but I just, I get the sense uh, yeah. that that's probably coming. And so if they're killing a reviewer, probably in the next 30 days, we're probably we're going to probably hear a, a Vine revamp. That's my guess. Something. Okay. So there's, there's something new they're going to launch. So... But but yeah, I've moved away from from review generation strategies. Like I'm not currently advocating for email review requests. I tell people don't put review requests in your product inserts. It is such a touchy subject right now. Yep. A lot of people are still having success with it. I just think the risk have never been greater. Yep, I'd say, I'd say trust in your product. If it's a good product, it's gonna get reviews. There is that though. Sometimes asking is the only way to get told. Uh, but 1% right. conversion rate on review generation is pretty standard right now. Yep. Yep. Uh, by the way, thanks, Stephen and Lucas, for tremendous info. You are very welcome, Dad Vu. You're welcome. And Kali Park says, thanks, guys. You're very welcome as well, Kali. Um, all right, so Lucas, uh, what else would you like to end with here? What else do you got? I think that would be it. I, I would say just keep um, – remember to go in Amazon and see the new things that they're offering. So like with sponsored display right now, is there's, there's a new retargeting ads. Some people have a couple options for retargeting ads. Some people only have one. But just think about how simple Amazon's platform is compared to Google or Facebook with PPC. Is there's there's a long way to go. So let, let me see what you have. So you get audience targeting, views remarketing, searches, and purchases. This doesn't show up on every account. Exactly. So not a lot of people have that. Um, so but what's a weird thing to do is sometimes you might get like if you're a smaller account you might get this i've seen that where someone had this and then it went away again so that's what i'm saying it's kind of like going back to ppc has not set it or forget it there's a lot of new stuff in here so you know take even if you're not managing your own ppc just make sure that you're in there seeing what's new and what you can actually use to grow your account you guys are very welcome here. Uh, hey guys, any thoughts on day parting strategies? Uh, so I know personally, my friends at the other big PPC agencies are against it, believe it or not. Uh, and it requires a lot of tech to make it happen. Lucas, what are your thoughts? Yes, I would completely agree with that. The only thing that I like to do is, I don't know, what would I call it? Maybe not day parting, um, but I look at days of the week. So for some of my clients that have very, very tight budgets, and if they want it, they have a max budget every day. We know that Sunday and Monday are the two best days on Amazon. So I just of, released a video the other day about best day to launch your product. It's Sunday or Monday because of the very thing we just talked about. Yeah. So if you have tight budgets, up at Sunday, Monday, and then maybe dial it down Friday, Saturday, which are super low. So that's the only thing that I really like to do. The only thing I will counter with is people do their buying on Sundays and Mondays, but they still do their viewing That's through the rest point. of the days. And so if if somebody, you know, turned off their campaigns, which we'd never do, like always be running, right? But like if somebody were to turn them off but only ran on Sundays and Mondays, their performance would be much, much weaker than somebody that ran it all days and was just equal on all days. That's my prediction. Yeah. Uh, Johan says, by the way, does Amazon have a news portal, newsletter, et cetera, for PPC that announces all their new stuff to marketers like us? Uh, <clears throat> I have very strong opinions in response on this question. Go first, Lucas. Does Amazon have a news portal? Uh, they, yes, they, I mean, they, they have some tools that they put out, but I don't think there's a, there's a one-stop shop that Amazon, that Amazon has that's actually reliable data. So what I would say is we have a PPC manager at Amazon and I am telling him about the new features before he tells me. 
And that is pretty much the Amazon MO, which is why I said I have very strong opinions on this one. There is no good piece of information coming out of Amazon. Yeah. It's the thought leaders like Lucas and myself who are telling everybody about the features, right? So like, has anybody in the chat ever heard about Amazon talking about remarketing or searches or purchase targeting ever? Nope. I'll wait. I don't think anybody's going to raise their hand. So, so gonna, what they're going to do is Amazon is going to is going to send out a generic email in probably another six months. Yep, about six this months from new, now. This new type of retargeting ads That's that have been in beta for a year and a half. But yeah, yeah. so yeah. so it's yeah, it's it's always fun to talk to Amazon PPC managers who are just reading from a script and and don't really know anything new. Sir forty five her says, "Have you tried the new H ten PPC feature? What are your thoughts?" So I'm not sure which new feature you're talking about. So for Helium 10, I, I use their tools and I use their their tool sets and their, and their research tools and everything, but I don't use any of their of their automated uh, PPC stuff. So, so I'm actually not, not sure what they came out with. So we're, we're in the same boat. We do everything manually in macros ourselves, but um, H10 software is pretty solid. They have big investors yeah. and big backers, so they will have some of the best tools uh, bar none, uh, for sure. So that is our My Amazon Guy podcast today. We're joined by Lucas Kwiatkowski. I almost did it. I almost did. I was close. Kwiatkowski. It looks Kwiatowski. worse than it. Kwiatkowski. There's a couple hidden letters in there. So if you want to get in touch with Lucas, we've posted his email address, his Facebook group, and his YouTube channel into the comment section. We appreciate everybody from watching. Uh, if you would like to express your gratitude for the information we've put out, just leave a comment on this video and thank us. It helps us get the search algorithm with YouTube, especially for those that are watching this in the replay. And if you need any help with uh, any of your PPC needs, you can check out Lucas or check out my Amazon guy. Thanks for coming on, Lucas. Awesome, Stephen. It was really great talking with you. Thanks a lot. Our next episode is tomorrow at noon EST, Eastern Standard Time. We will be talking with the GS1 team. People directly from GS1 will be coming in to answer all of your questions about barcodes, UPCs, EANs, how to deal with all of that. Uh, be sure to tune in and check this out. My name is Stephen Pope, and I'm the founder of Miami.